Well, it's an election year, and I've already voted. Uh, that's right. The most important election that there is is God's sovereign election. He chose me before the foundation of the earth. My name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, according to the Book of Revelation, before the world even existed. And the names of all his children are in that book. The question is, is your name in that book? Mysteriously, somehow, uh, God understands and knows in his omniscience who will choose him. And uh, he uses his creation to make his appeal to humanity to show the obvious reality that there is a creator. That creator took up human flesh and dwelt among us in the body of Jesus Christ. He told us what he wanted us to know in his word. And uh, the Bible is God's word and uh, basically tells us what the situation is. Now, what's very important for you to understand is that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says, they refused to love the truth and so be saved. So God sends them a powerful delusion. So they're not going to believe the Bible. They're going to believe it's a fairy tale. Also, in Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes that the gospel is foolishness to those that are perishing. And, and also that the Bible is spiritually discerned. So man has responsibility to believe and to put our faith in his provision on the cross. Christ came and was born of a virgin through the uh, Holy Spirit. She became pregnant and delivered uh, the perfect Savior, uh, God in the flesh. The Word was flesh and uh, dwelt among us. And the Word is Jesus Christ. And my appeal to you in this election year is to examine yourself to see if you're truly in the faith. God's Word explains what a Christ follower will look like. It's totally impossible for the flesh, our body, our humanness, to be able to work up the requirements that God commands, to love, to forgive, to obey. Totally impossible for our flesh to be able to pull that off. Scripture is the, uh, the ultimate indicator of how we're doing as we look at that. So there will be people that have opinions on how uh, people are living. Well, their opinion doesn't matter the way Scripture matters. Now that I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, He affirms the reality that I'm one of His children, that I'm one of God's children. And as I look around at this sea of humanity, I recognize that there are people doing things that uh, God doesn't approve of. Now, it's not my place to go and tell them to stop doing that. What my mission in this world is basically, I understand it to be, is to hear God's Word and share God's Word around the planet, around the clock. One of the vehicles that I find very effective is Bible.com, which contains over 900 languages of God's Word that can be shared around this planet, around the clock. And each person that has a Facebook account that can type Bible.com in a Facebook comment can help participate in that particular aspect of the Great Commission. Now I do this face-to-face, -face, worldwide, 24-7 uh, Facebook worldwide 24-7 and face-to-face -face as well. This is basically my podium, uh, to, so to speak. It's a, it's a platform that is basically looking over the North South Carolina border and we get a gorgeous sunrise here. As this sun is coming up here, 
right across the middle of Asia is where the sun is setting. Now, the sun is perpetually, apparently rising and setting. It's continually happening. I commented on a photo of mine where I looked like a hippie today. It was the old me. I had uh, the same sunglasses. I've got new lenses in them now. That was the old man, the using marijuana and other drugs. Uh, and in this uh, last dozen years, there's been pharmaceutical drugs included. I would say that those were the most difficult. The way that they blocked my understanding of the reality that's unfolding in front of me. So what I am here to tell you is that I no longer have the need or desire for pharmaceutical modification of my perception. Jesus rewards obedience. My life lived entirely in submission to his will for me provides a reward that surpasses any chemical that I've ever induced. Um, and, and there's also brain chemicals that are involved, uh, endorphins and dopamine that the brain operates on, and it can be activated by fear or lust or anger. All of those types of emotions actually affect the way that we perceive reality. I understand that the Bible talks about a time that's unparalleled in human history, the Great Tribulation. Uh, when is that going to start? I don't know. I do know that there are Christ followers around the planet right now that are being martyred for their unswerving faith and profession of faith in Jesus. And that could happen to anybody at any time. And I'm not afraid about that. I, I don't, uh, if, if God allows that to happen to me for his glory, then, uh, then so be it. I'm not paranoid, not afraid, not suicidal, just wanted to let you know. If something <laughs> happens to me that uh, uh, prevents me from continuing my appeal to sharebible.com, uh, I would say that you can know that Satan was really unhappy with me and God allowed it for his glory. So until that happens, I will continue to say Bible.com. I'm going to put it in Facebook comments. Some people don't like it. Some people will block and uh, unfriend, and, and that's okay. That's, that's their choice. My question would be to anybody who has the ability to share God's word around the planet, around the clock, why wouldn't you? Now, one of the dynamics that I would like to share with you that's so important is that of the thousands of associated profiles that I'm connected with, many of them have more than a thousand friends. Conservatively, in my Friends of Friends network, there's somewhere between 5 and 20 million people that I'm connected with. Now, there's also about a billion and a half people on Facebook right now. So when somebody has a birthday, that's one of the key times that I wish them a happy birthday and include the Bible.com comment uh, in there. Typically, it'll be joy and peace in Jesus, Bible.com. And the reason for that is I want people to know, the friends of my friends, that joy and peace can only be found in Jesus. When I say in Jesus, that is a very theological weighty term that means only those that are in Christ that are born again are going to find the joy that passes all understanding and the peace that passes all understanding. So if your life isn't characterized by loving God, experiencing joy and peace 
in Christ, uh, then you might want to look at some of the dynamics of your experience. Uh, are you truly born again? That was the question that I asked Jesus, was I truly born again when I heard Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 say to his disciples that on that day, judgment day, many would say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy, drive out demons and work miracles? And he said to those individuals, away from me, I never knew you. Well, that would be the most disturbing and disappointing and uh, uh, just terrible things to hear is that I didn't know Jesus and I was on my way to hell. That's why I'm willing to be uh, unfriended, blocked, and, and uh, people shun me. Uh, that's not my uh, responsibility, what people do with what I present to them. What is their responsibility is what they do with it. And ultimately, your responsibility with what you do with Christ's appeal to be born again. Examine yourself and see if you're truly in the faith. This is not meant to be offensive. Uh, uh, if, it's, if Christ offends, let him offend. And he is offensive. I just don't want the offense to be my flesh. I want him to make his appeal to humanity through his word, which he does. Bible.com, once again, is over 900 languages of his word to humanity. Uh, choose to love the truth. Seek the truth while it may be found. May you find Jesus. May you find joy and peace in Jesus.